Got your key. Working it out. Over and over again. Thank you for healing the sick. Thank you for just keeping us all in our right minds. God, you move all the stumbling blocks out of our way. You keep making that pathway so straight. Thank you. Let Jesus let him fix it. Fix it for you.
bless the sick and the afflicted ones in this place. God, you know who they are. Continue to bless each and every one on the sound of my voice. Take notice on the officers and members of the church. Continue to bless them as they do their duties in this place. And Father, bless all, us all as collectively as one. It's in Jesus' name in the Christ we pray. Let the church say amen. amen. Now come on, give God some praise. You may be seated. Romans chapter 6 reads, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we who were dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he who is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead in Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin. But that he lives, he lives unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but live unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. What a beautiful picture. As the standing comes to the water today, this picture of Christ going to the grave for us. We'll take Amy in. Take her under the water. That sinless of Christ being in the grave at three days. But we won't leave her there. We'll bring her back up. Which shows that resurrection power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I don't know where you were baptized at. But I want you to go back to that day. That you showed forth to the world. That now I'm a Christian. That God is dwelling on the inside. I live in Jesus. My life is no longer my own. So this time we're going to ask Brother Super if he lead us in one of those old hymns of the church. Take me to the water.
that joy, Lord, that is going through Sister Amy now, Lord. Thank you for the joy that's in this congregation. Thank you, God, for saving souls, delivering, and setting free. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. With all you who would like to say Bible verses, please line up on my left hand side. Visiting youth are also welcome to come at this time. We thank God for the wonderful and talented youth that he has blessed us with here at Ebenezer. And we thank God for our Proverbs 22 and 6 parents and teachers for their labors of love and training up our youth in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. And they can say as it is written in Psalm 119 and 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against them. Would the congregation please pray with us the Lord's Prayer. is working on my behalf. is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It comes from Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 18. Amen. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and will choose after take. It's from Proverbs chapter 3, 5 through 6. Amen. Do not be afraid for all of you. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my concerns. See if there is any offense of in me. Lead me in the everlasting way. Because in Psalms chapter 139, verses 23 and 24. Amen. Read the light of the word. Say you only hear that might be hidden in Matthew 5, verse 14. But now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. Psalms 39, verse 7. Honor my father and mother, and you leave me to Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. Smith is going to 
going to give us a devotional meditation. <laughs> Good morning. Today I'm going to talk to you about a very familiar story. The job interview. Felix had just graduated from Cambridge University and he went on his first interview to get him a job. He was just so excited. He got to the interview. He just went through it with flying colors. He said everything right. The interview was so excited. Then they were reaching the end of the interview and the personnel coordinator said, uh, now uh, Felix, um, uh, what salary are you uh, looking for? And Felix said, well, I think maybe about $140,000 a year, uh, plus benefits. And the interviewer said, well, let me see, let me, let me see here now. Now, let me say, uh, you'll get five weeks of vacation, 14 paid holidays, full medical and dental, full retirement, up to 50% of your salary, then I'm going to throw in a company car for two years. And it's going to be a red Mercedes. Fingers his eyes got big as a 50 cent piece. He said, wow, are you kidding me? The interviewer said, yeah. So that's how it is with us. It's, it's not where you start in this Christian journey. It's where you end up. You see, God is always there watching us and waiting on us. Sometimes he might want to have an interview with you. So just be open, listening, and let him work through you because he's not here on earth today. He uses us to get the work done. So always be willing to allow God to use you for his purposes. Thank you so much for listening. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good Bible study is tomorrow. There will be an early bird activity from 5.40 to 5.55, followed by an express dinner at 6 p.m. Dinner will end at 6.20 and Bible study will start. We will end at 7.30 p.m. Don't forget to bring your Bibles. All youth and their parents are welcome to attend. There are classes available for all ages. Also on Monday evening, there is a scholarship committee meeting at 6.30 p.m. On Tuesday, we have Election Day. If you have not already voted, please do so and continue to pray for all of our elected leaders. Later on Tuesday, well, earlier on Tuesday, or depending on when you vote, Noonday Bible Study will be in the Fellowship Hall from noon to 1245. We're continuing to study, focus on the goal. All are invited. Snacks will be served. And on Tuesday evening, we'll have our dance ministry practice, which will be at 6.30 p.m. Wednesday. Are you skilled in working with computers and editing? There will be a media ministry meeting in the sanctuary from 5.30 to 6.15 p.m. on Wednesday. The topic will be sanctuary display training. If you are interested in being a part of this ministry, and helping out with running the TV displays in the sanctuary on Sunday, please attend this training session. Contact out Angela Howard if you need more information. Our Wednesday night prayer and Bible study will now start 30 minutes earlier. 
Prayer will be at 6.30 p.m. in the sanctuary, led by our deacons ministry. Please come out to pray with our elders. We have those who hold hands while praying. But if you want to sit on a pew or bow, please feel free. The prayers of righteous truly do, does avail much. Immediately after prayer, there will be Bible study in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. We're in the book of Leviticus. We're learning about sacrifices and how they relate to Christ. Everyone is welcome. Please adjust your schedules to note the new time for our Wednesday night prayer and Bible studies. Thursday, we'll have our church budget meeting at 6.30 p.m. Saturday, we'll have a finance committee meeting from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. The Senior Usher Ministry invites you to, a, to the annual Senior Citizens Dinner on Saturday evening at 4 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. <laughs> Minister Barbara Mims is the guest speaker. All that are 55 years and older are invited to attend this dinner. Sunday, we will have our 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. morning worship service next Sunday. Minister Anthony Berry will be the speaker for 8 a.m. service. And Minister Wader will be the speaker for 11 a.m. service. The male choir will, will render the music for both services. Sunday school will be at 9.45 a.m. for all ages. Now at this time, we have a very important message from Sister Toots. <laughs> and republic and liberal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is your right. Exercise your right. Now on Tuesday, November 6th, you get one more chance to go out and vote. You will be voting in your own precinct. The polls will open at 6.30 a.m. I mean 4 o'clock risers. <laughs> There are some in the house. <laughs> How many five o'clock risers? There are plenty in the house. How many people just rise? <laughs> Those are the voters I need to come out at 6.30 a.m. and the polls will close at 7.30. If you have any questions, anything that seems out of the norm at your polling places, please snapshot and call the Board of Elections because we do have some problems during the voting time. And we want to make sure everyone's right is exercised. Please pray and take your souls to the polls. Thank you. I wanted to thank Ms. Brooks. She always does the hats. I do this in honor of Diane Munden, who is one of our members and angels who've gone on to be with the Lord. Yes. And I thank uh, Miss Lucas and the Mevin family. Amen. Thank you yes. so much and have a blessed day. Go vote. Amen. Amen. Let's make sure that we attend to Sister Tooks and share with us this morning. At this time, Brother Tyrone Woods has an announcement.
All right, the reason why I'm up here, every year around this time, you know I give codes to kids for Christmas. I need your help. <clears throat> First of all, let me start off with what I did last year, thanks to many of you. Last year, I was able to buy 327 coats. <laughs> now, me personally, this year, when I say this, I am not bragging. I'm not boasting. I don't do that. You know, my heart is real when it comes to kids. Last year, I spent $5,000 of my own money. And I don't say that because I don't have a lot of money. This is money that I saved up for the year just for this occasion. So each coat averages $20. So I was able to get 250 coats of my own money. Now in saying that, I need to explain to you what I did with that money. Since 2010 to 2016, how I would distribute the coats was, I would post it on social media and say, hey, meet me at Walmart on such and such date, between such and such hour, and if your child needs a coat, I would buy them a coat. Well, it was taking advantage of that. People taking advantage of it because I guess it was free. So I said, Lord, I need to do it. Show me another way to do it so that the kids need it can receive it. So last year what I did, posted on social media again. I said, in order for your child to get a coat, you have to bring your child to church to hear a word from the Lord. And after service, I will give your child a coat. So, in saying that, that didn't work out too good because I understand everybody might not believe in Christ. Everybody might not go to church. But there's no reason why your child is suffering. You shouldn't bring them to church just to get a coat. Okay? So what I did with that, because Few came out, but I still had plenty of coats left. So what I did with the coats that I had left, I donated 50 coats to an organization called Felonies, Inc. And these are felons that has done their time, done the crime, done their time, but they're out trying to do productive things in society and trying to help kids. So I was able to donate, I'm oh, sorry, 100 coats to them. Now I donated 50 of those coats to a center called Pathway Center on Church Street. And I think they house single mothers with kids. So they was really blessed with that, those 50 coats. And uh, I also, you know, we feed the homeless every third Sunday of the month. So I had some coats left over, and I had enough to feed a lot, I mean, to clothe a lot of the homeless guys downtown. That's it. So in saying that, I prayed about it and I asked the Lord to show me the best way to get the coast directly to the kids that need it. So what I'm going to do this year is I'm going to start going to every elementary school. So this year, uh, I'm going to start off with Bessemer Elementary, which is on 918 Huffine Mill Road. Because that is a really low poverty, low area. And the reason why I chose that school first is because you know, during the summer, they had a large devastation yeah. in that area, King Forest, mm -hmm. up and down Phillips Avenue, and they're still, real, real, still rebuilding. So I said I'm going to choose that place first. So what I did is, last Friday, I went to the principal. Her name is Chelsea Smith, the principal of Bessemer Elementary. I told her what I've been doing and what I want to do this year. So she said, that's a great idea. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have my social worker to get with the teachers in the different classes, and they're going to determine which kids need the coach the most. And I told her I would get back with her two weeks later, which would be next Friday. So she asked me, well, how many coats are you talking about? So I said, I know I've been saving up $5,000 for the year for this. So I said, well, I can do two fifty. dollars So she said, that's great. So I'm going to go next Friday, and I'm going to get the list of the coats that, I, that they need, the sizes and everything. But also in saying that, I want to do more than 250. I need y'all help. If I can't turn to family, my church family, I need help from the pew 
to the congregation. You know, I would, it's nothing I wouldn't do, and half of us, most of us, are blessed. You know, our kids got every video game, every gadget, the thousand dollar phones, but then you got children over here that, that, that don't even have a coat. Don't have a coat. And let me back up to this so you can understand why I do what I do. So you can explain why I'm doing this. 2010, early one winter morning, I was on my way to work. And there was like three or four kids there at the bus stop. Now remember, this is, this is about 30, 40 degree weather. And there was this young little girl, she was sitting there in a little dress, like a little ball ballerina dress. Here is winter, winter. So as I'm passing by on my way, I stopped, I said, little girl, where is your coat? She said, my mama couldn't afford to buy me one. Now how is, why does she have to suffer? Mm -hmm. Why does she have to suffer? Because of her parents' lack of parenting, or whatever the situation may be. Mm -hmm. Then we got people in here that's driving the net, the, fa the fancy cars, the, you know, got the finest coats. Come on now, and you trying to tell me you can't help me help someone else? Now the pastor sit there and preach about it. each one, each one. Now you come to church every Sunday, sit in the same pew, and you feel all you need to do is just give your offering, and you're good. It's more to that. We got to go outside the walls, outside these four walls. Okay, I mean we can help each other here, but we're supposed to go out to the community. So don't help me reach each one, reach one. Help me to reach hundreds. Okay? I'm, I'm going to do 400. I can do 250 on my own, but I need your help, guys. Anything would help. Anything that I have left over, what I plan to do also, like I say, we do the, um, the um, feed the hungry on the third Sunday. So what I want to do also, once I take care of those kids in elementary school, I want to go, I want to buy hoodies, I want to buy tofadis, because I want to buy coats for them. So I need y'all help, guys. You cannot be blessed with a closed fist. You got to give in order to receive. So I'm asking each and every one of y'all, please help me. And I will, I will tell you next week, because I got to go see her, the principal, Friday. And she will give me the list. And those of you who don't want to give me the money, I am fine with that. I see, I would love for you to give me the coat. Go purchase the coat yourself. Hey, give me the coat. Because to me, it's not about your money. I don't want your money. I'm not rich, but I'm blessed. The Lord is best. I don't want your money. I want the coach. But if you don't want to go out and get the coach, I will spend every dime that you give me on the coach. I promise you. I don't want your money. I want to help people that are less fortunate than I am. Because that could have been so easy with me. That could have been you. That could have been you. That could have been, been you. Sitting out there in the cold, shivering. In the wintertime with no coat on. And some of you probably been through that. So why would you not want to help me? Get out your pockets, please, or go to the store and go get a coat. Help me to help somebody else. Help me to reach somebody in need. That's what Christianity is about. Love others. Help others. Service for others. Not selfishness. Please, y'all, help me. God bless you. how much we need to touch the community and show them the love of Christ. Covered in God's love, this is a good segue here, covered in God's love, the eternal God is your dwelling place and underneath are his everlasting arms. The EBC Youth Choir is collecting blankets to share with those in need. Blankets should be new or gently used. Please place donations in the box in the fellowship hall. We will collect blankets until November 18th. See a youth choir advisor if you have any questions. And it has 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Amen. Amen.
Attention all leadership and all volunteers of Ebenezer. Our annual leader and volunteer appreciation dinner is here. Mark your calendars for Tuesday, November 27th at 6.15 p.m. at Occasions Southern Cuisine in Burlington, North Carolina. If you plan to attend, please sign up on the sheet on the back hallway board so that we can get an accurate count. Thank you so much. Now, if you'll give attention to the insert of today's program, it's two-sided. It's a nice write-up on Harvest Pumpkins. And on the back side is a reminder about the Ebenezer Baptist Church Scholarship Fund. To make a donation, write SF for Scholarship Fund in a special section of the church envelope. Thanks. This comes from the Scholarship Committee. Now at this time, we would like to recognize all visitors. If you're visiting with us this morning, we ask that you please stand and make a serious march meeting. Visitors, please stand.
First of all, I'd like to say good morning and, and to everyone that's out this morning, but it's now, it's, it's time to give what God has laid on your heart. As we give here at Ebenezer, we, we also must remember what Brother Wood said, that there's also other situations and circumstances that we can help. So as God laid on your heart, you had to uh, give here at Ebenezer and also if, if there's other organizations and situations that you can help, please do. Because there is a need outside of this church. A heavy need. So as we pray today, then we will come forward as, as the ushers usher you forward. So go with our hands. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today acknowledging that you are our God. Acknowledging your son Jesus, that's our God, our Savior, and our Deliverer. Acknowledging your Holy Spirit. Acknowledging the word that you left us. Dear Heavenly Father, we acknowledge your church and those that come in the church. Dear Heavenly Father, for your congregation. We acknowledge our pastors, our leaders. Now, Father, we just thank you for this offering that will come forward today, that we can help use it to upbuild your kingdom. Now, Father, we ask all this in the name of your Savior, and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 Could we stand and follow the directions of the earth?
tell you, there's nothing like order in the church. Amen. <laughs> pastor said. <laughs> look at it. Ain't God good, though, church? Before Brother Brooke, Sister Brooke McCann come with the moment of meditation, I'd like to say Brother Carter is always a honor to see you because you bring it back memories of a deacon in my home church in South Carolina. Because you sit up, but yet still there's something shining about you that does something to my heart every time I see you. Amen. And church don't wait to give people their flowers when they leave. Give them their flowers while they live. You know, you can pile all the flowers up on the grave and they can't smell them. Oh, I love you, I love you. They can't hear you. Give them your flowers while you live. I was taught and I was trained to do just that. I don't want my work to be in vain. Again, I love you, man. When, you, when I see you get out of the car with your wife, she read that by your side. Not, not giving him more props than I give anybody else, but he's a real role model as a senior. He got wisdom. And all you got to do is listen to him. He'll tell you about something. God bless you. I also like to say while I'm standing, Pastor Wood reminded me today is not mere course. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't worry about it. I mean, if you, if you get started, you're going to get old too. <laughs>
did not know they could make it today. Help them to confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that Father you raised them from the dead and you said they would be saved. Let them know it's by grace and faith and not of themselves. It's a gift from you. Now Lord as we approach your word you know my hang ups, my infirmities, my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Therefore Holy Spirit I thank you for being here. You've never failed. So would you teach us and guide us and lead us into all truth. Please make this word so plain, so easy to be understood. That even a small child can be transformed to be like you. Would you be in my eyes and my seeing, my mouth and my speaking, my heart and my understanding. Lord, we need your anointing. Dig deep today, Lord. Deal with those underlying issues in our lives that we don't like to talk about that we can be transformed to be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Are you ready for God's word today? Amen. Grab those Bibles or devices and follow along with us. Exodus 14, and verse 10. We've been in this section of scripture. It seems good to the Lord just to continue on. Please get us to the Red Sea or across the Red Sea experience. Exodus chapter 14, and that 10th verse, it reads, And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. I want to speak from the subject today, learning to deal with fear. Learning to deal with fear. As we get back into this section of Scripture, remember the time frame, 1445 B.C. Uh, we could actually uh, transition and continue on to 1405 B.C. This is uh, the Moses leadership time of God bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt and on their way into that promised land. On last Sunday, as we progressed through these scriptures, line upon line, precept upon precept, we were in Exodus 14, 4, and it read, Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart, so that he will pursue them, and I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And our subject matter from last Sunday was, When the Lord uses your enemy, to bless you. Amen. Through this whole process, we know God is still in charge. Just quick points in review, a summary. Uh, that first point from last Sunday, how marvelous do you want your miracle? Uh, we found out that God sometimes allows us to be in some tough situations, uh, but that's where the most miraculous miracles take place. Amen. Another point, God knows the thoughts of the enemy. It's so good to know, no matter what's coming against you, no matter what demonic pressure is coming on you. God already knows the move of the enemy. Therefore, if God be for us, he's more than the whole world against us. Another point was, God will get the glory. That's good news. No matter what you're going through today, God is going to get the glory. You can fight against him all you want to. God is going to get the glory. Another point, we need to thank God for his mercy. Amen. I'm telling you, we learned that with the children of Israel. God's mercies are everything. And then another point, Watch out for your enemy. Your enemy will not give up. The devil does not play fair. The demons, they keep coming at us. We've got to watch out for our enemy. Then that final one, the enemy doesn't understand who is on our side. He doesn't understand. He would give up a long time ago if he only understood that the Lord is on our side. Let's jump into that 10th verse again. And when Pharaoh drew near, 
the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, so they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Remember on last time, God has done miracle after miracle, plague after plague, till finally uh, we see that the Egyptians say, leave, just go. And as they're marching out, they march out boldly, and, and, and they know God is with them. They know it was nobody but the Lord. But it's amazing in our lives yes. that God can do one miracle yesterday. He can do a miracle the week before. But when we're challenged with something in our life right now, fear can come in. I, I don't care who you are. You can be the most sanctified, the most Holy Ghost filled uh, person in here. And you may have had a lot of victories in your life. But something can come in your life. Yes. To shake you to your core. At this point, look, the children of Israel, they were on their way out. They knew God was with them. But the reality has not set in that the enemy is still going to be after them. Look at this. The children of Israel, they lifted up their eyes. They looked and they saw the enemy coming. And when they saw the enemy coming, all of a sudden the realization came to them, man, we don't have any weapons. We just left uh, the oppressors. We, we left those people who had us in slavery. And, and we know God was with us when we were coming out. But the question is, is he with us right now? Some of you know, you know what God did last week. You, you know he did it last year. But the present question is, will he be with me in this struggle? Yes. With this diagnosis, with, with this relationship, with this church. Will he be in the presence right now? Here's a point for you. What will you do when the enemy comes? Yes. We've got to ask our question to ourselves. What will we do when the enemy comes? Because I'm telling you, he is coming. Amen. There ought to be some hallelujahs and hallelujahs. He is coming to us in various ways, in various forms. He is coming our direction. The question is, will you be ready? And what will you do? Second Timothy 1 Timothy 1.7, I love this scripture, uh, learning to deal with fear. Uh, Timothy writes in the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. But I love this scripture, even in the Israelite sphere, even when they allowed fear to come in their heart, they did something wonderful. And, and you got to get this, even when you're struggling and you're going through your fearful time, the children of Israel, look at that last part of the scripture, cried out to the Lord. No matter if you are losing it, learn how to cry out. I've told this story before many times with my wife uh, some years ago. Uh, she had a tumor on the brain. And, and going in there, man, I had taught and teaching the Ebenezer for a long time. And I thought faith and loving God, the scriptures, God had done so many miracles in my life. But this one got close to me uh, simply because it was my wife. We went through and the diagnosis and all these things. I, I'll never forget, uh, in time of trauma, you remember all the details real good. And we went to this one doctor. And I remember he came in and his shirt was kind of open at the top. He had all these hairs coming out. And, um, and really, he, he talked to us like he was from the mafia or something. He had big, strong hands. And he said, what we're going to do is we're going to cut her skull open and we're going to take a piece and gonna put it to the side. And, and we're going to dig in there. We're going to get it out. And she'll be in the hospital for like weeks and weeks and recovery. But she'll be okay. And, and when he said it, it was so unfair. Feeling that, that it just broke me down. I'm like, this is my baby. This is my, my wife. And, and, and walking out of that office, my wife, she's cool. She, she's in, connected with the Lord. She was all right. She knew God had it. And, but, but me, I'm, I'm the pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church. I'm walking in power and the anointing. And when I thought about the situation, fear came. It grabbed me. Anybody ever been grabbed by fear? It, it grabbed me and, and took the air out. It got right up under my rear cage and, and grabbed my, my lungs and just squeezed. And I had to go to the bathroom. And in the bathroom, I couldn't even get myself together because fear encapsulated me. In those times, what are you going to do when the enemy comes and stuff comes that you're not expecting in your life? Fear can come so quickly. Look at Exodus 14, 11. Then they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, 
Have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Even though they cried out to the Lord in the last verse, notice at this point, fear comes in and it quickly distracts us from the goodness of the Lord. Here's a point. Fear takes our attention away from God. When I was in that bathroom, I, I, I am, I'm crying out to the Lord, but I was still distracted because God had done so many other miracles in my life. I mean, I, I'm collecting miracles in my life, but, but sometimes when you're in that present situation and struggle, you can forget how big God is. Anybody ever been there? You, you forget how, how strong he is, and no matter what the situation, how he can clear it up, fear takes our attention away from God. Look at that scripture all of a sudden because fear fear comes in, they turn to the leader. Yes. Moses. We don't care about the rod that you got. We don't care about the plagues, anything of that sort. Look at us now. The Egyptians are coming against us. And then they make these statements. They said, you know what, they made? because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Well, well. Why did you just leave us in Egypt? Well, in Egypt, there were slaves in Egypt. But when fear comes, you forget how good God has been to you. And so often we complain about our situations. We, we blame our managers when God is the one who provides for us. We blame the government when God is in control of the government. We blame our political parties. But hasn't God been good to us? Didn't he wake us up this morning and start us on our way? Give us a reasonable portion of our health and our strength. But when fear comes, God has been faithful to us. Even when we weren't faithful to ourselves. But yet when the enemy brings fear in, we forget and are distracted. Look at Exodus 14, 12. Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt? Saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Look at this. Now they start having flashbacks. Now, they, they've forgotten, really, that they were really under oppression. They were dying in Egypt. But, but now they're like, you know what? It would have been better for us to stay slaves. Here's a point. This is what fear does. Fear makes us irrational. Really, it, it takes us out of the rational and gets us into the irrational because now we're allowing the enemy to cloud our mind. To understand what God has done for us, a uh, John Haggai, he actually told us, he was an evangelist, international evangelist, he told this story, so I'm going to try to get it as close as I can. Uh, he told of a woman that was in Darlington, Maryland, and, and she was married and she had eight children, and she went out to the grocery store, and she came back in uh, uh, to her home, and when she came back into her home, if, if you're a parent, you know this, it was quiet. And if you got eight children and it's quiet, something's up. Something's up. So she, she walks in, and the youngest of the kids, five kids, they're in the living room, and they're sitting around in a circle. So she walks in, they're quiet, and when she walks in, she sees them sitting in that circle, and all of a sudden she looks closely, and they have five baby skunks. Yeah, the, she said they were the cutest skunks you've ever seen. The cutest skunks you've ever seen. And then the five, the five kids, they were sitting around in a circle, they were real quiet, and they were playing with the baby skunks. So, so the mama, she goes, she goes, oh my God, these are skunks in my house, in the room, and my kids are playing with them. So she screams. Fear comes in, she screams. She says, kids, run! And so what, what does a good kid do? The, the kid picks up the skunk, all of them, they pick up the skunk, and they start running. So, so Mon realizes that, oh my God, they were supposed to leave the skunk. So they pick up the skunks, they're running, and then all of a sudden fear really gets in. So all she does, she screams again. She says, no! And at that time, it scared the kids so badly, they squeezed the skunk. Oh. <laughs> Mother Gladden. Skunks don't like to be squeezed. Here's a point. Fear
Fear makes you do dumb things. Not a piece of hallelujah in hell. Fear will get you into a jacked up mortgage. It'll make you buy a car that you can't afford. It'll make you do stupid things with your kids. It'll get you in a jacked up relationship. I'm telling you, fear makes you do dumb things. And then another point out of this, fear is contagious. When I came out of that bathroom, I still had fear. But, but when I finally kind of got myself together, I was upset. Not with the devil, I was upset with my wife. Because she didn't crumble under fear like me. So what does a good husband do? I, I took her out to eat, and I said, hey, you got to feel the way I feel. So I began to explain to her, I began to explain to her the issue, how serious this was. And you know what? My fear, I was able to pass my fear to her. And so by the time I got to talk to her, a good preacher, I, I put it in detail. But she was fearful. She wasn't fearful at first because she trusted out. But when she heard her pastor. <laughs> well, we were both we were both sitting there crying again. I said, that's good, that's good, because this is a fearful situation right here. That's what I want. It's contagious. You gotta be careful who you hang around because if they're fearful, they can pass it on to you. You, you can be honest, you got, you're like, God got this, God got this. You get around the wrong folks, they get to the whispering in your ear, you start doubting stuff, you start thinking that God is not in control, you start thinking that a political party is in control, or a president is in control, or a church leader is in control. It'll mess up your mind. Amen. Amen. Learning to deal with fear, look at Exodus 14, 13. And Moses said to the people, you love Moses. I'm telling you, I, I don't know if I, 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 I just would have told him something else. But look at what Moses said. Do not be afraid. I'm sorry, Bianca. I should have said this. Do not be afraid. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Moses said, which he will accomplish for you. This is faith talk right here. He said today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. Here's the point. Get out of the scripture. Give fear to the Lord. Now, now, I know the end of the story, we got one more scripture in this section I'm just going to deal with today. But please understand, Moses is not really speaking of himself. He's hearing from the Lord right now. Yeah. Right? This is a faith statement right here. He says when, when fear is coming, he's seeing the Egyptians coming. He knows the diagnosis of before. He realized if God doesn't show up, there is not going to be any help. To say, don't be afraid. Yeah. When the doctor said what he said, and don't be afraid. When your bills are due, don't be afraid. When you've got imminent issues that are going on with your family, don't be afraid. Stand still. Then he said, I want you to see the Lord. His salvation. Because he's going to show up today. And I believe, I believe it's a prophetic word for somebody. Your deliverance is today. Not tomorrow. Not Tuesday. Not Wednesday. It is right now. You just got to believe God is already working out. Fear is trying to come in your mind and encapsulate you. You got to know God is already working out. I dare you to lift up your hands and give God the, the, the loudest shout you can thank you right now. My salvation is today. Give fear to the Lord. Exodus 14, 14 in this section, last verse. The Lord will fight for you. And you shall. How would our lives change when we get in a situation if we can learn to just shut up? Fear comes in and this is irrational and we want to control things, we want to fix things, but there's so many times God has said, I got this. I got this. This is a point the Lord has your back. If you can get this mind, God never leaves me nor forsakes me. He has my back. No matter what comes my way, God is right there. And therefore, all he wants me to do is just stand still. And I'm going to watch him fight. 
If you ever seen God fight, oh my goodness, he comes in in ways the enemy does not even understand. If you ever been delivered in your life and didn't even know it was coming, if there's ever been any doors that were shut in your face and God just opened it up, why? Have you ever had your back up against the wall and all of a sudden God said, I got it, and he just swooped right in. Yeah. You ever went to bed and, and everything was jacked up and you said, God is yours. It ain't, ain't no need of me staying up. You never sleep though, you summer. So you went ahead and went to sleep. And by the time you woke up, God is up there to be some hallelujah. God is already worked that thing out. So I to deal with fear. Well, I want to bring this all together for you. As we stop here in this section of the day, what wonderful words from Moses being led of the Lord. But as we study later, it said before, Moses is going to fail us. Moses, even in saying this here from God, he has his own doubts and his own doubts. But I'm, I'm so glad there's, there's one person I can say that never failed. His name is Jesus. I, I, I'm sorry if, if you thought that I got everything right and I, I, I lowered your expectation. That's good because I don't get everything right. But let me, let, me, let me introduce you to somebody who will never fail you. I, I will fail your expectations. I will, our deacons will fail them. Our, the congregation will fail you. There will be somebody in your life that you will lift up. They will fail you. But Jesus, that's why we needed a Savior. Because we didn't have it within ourselves. Just the fact that he would come and live amongst men and be our example. Remember, there was one time Jesus was on a ship, and I, I love this story. He was there, and he, he had taught us how he'd done all these miracle signs and wonders, but now he goes on a ship, and he wants to take a rest. He speaks to them in Mark 4, 37. He tells them in that whole section, he says, we're going to get on the ship, we're going to go to the other side, but he did not tell them that the enemy was going to come. He did not tell them that the enemy was going to come bringing fear, Mark 4, 37, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. That's Jesus. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perished? You ever been there? You ever got something that came in so quickly in your life, and all of a sudden you, you, you were tempted to doubt God? And you ask him, God, where are you? Don't you remember me? Mark 4, 39. Then he arose, Jesus, and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace. Be still. Isn't that what Moses said? He said, Be still. And see the salvation of the Lord. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Mark 4, 40. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be? That even the wind and the sea obey him. Learning to deal with fear. See, when you realize there's one that's bigger than fear in your life, one that can speak the fear and say, Be gone, and fear be gone. I'm telling you, there's some situations that God is going to leave you in, but when, when he comes on the inside and you turn fear over to him, you'll be able to walk through that situation. Everybody else will be falling apart. They'll be just falling apart, crumbling, but you got, he's like, what's going on? You got peace on the inside of you. Why? Because you've given it to the Lord, John 14, 47. He told his disciples when, when that cross is approaching him, he said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. But the Apostle John, he gives us insight on what love does when, when it comes against fear. 1 John 4, 17, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. 1 John 4, 19, we love him because he first loved us. See, when you fall head over heels in love with Jesus, 
He's starting to realize something. You're starting to realize, you know what, this is not just to come on church on Sunday and, and just sit and have a praise team or a good choir. That's wonderful and that's great. Or even hear testimony. It's about a love relationship. It's about connecting with our Father and understanding what He did with His Son. You know what? Jesus just didn't stop on the boat, but He goes to the Garden of Gethsemane and He cries out on our behalf and says, Father, not Thy will, but let Thy will be done. He's betrayed by Judas Iscariot. He's beat all night long, all for us so that we can realize that we can learn to deal with fear. Everybody else was confused about what was going on with Jesus, but I'm so glad that He took it like the God that He is. Nails in His hands and nails in his feet. He's hung on the cross of Calvary for you and me. I'm so glad that when I go through tribulation and situation, I can think about the cross of Calvary where it looked like it was hopeless, that nothing would happen. There ought to be some amens in the house. It looked like the thorn was spinning. The devil had him. He died on the cross of Calvary. They put him in a cold tomb. I don't know where you are in your situation right now. You may feel like you can take not another step. You may feel like it is but it is you crawling in the town. But I want you to know, just hold on a little bit. Be still, be still, be still. And see the salvation of our Lord. I don't know when it's going to come to you. Maybe it will come today. You're one of the ones that's going to get that. Maybe it'll be on Monday or Tuesday. But if you just stand still and wait. He's like, Pastor, how can you say that? Because it didn't happen for him on the first day. Nor did it happen on the second day. But early Sunday morning. when the Spirit of God is there. Saints, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the scriptures say that he raises up a standard against him. So what we have to do in those situations that we're in right now, we got to say, God, you got it. You got this. If you did it in the past, I know you can do it now. Now, now there's another step. The next step is we're pulling this together. You got to know that the enemy's not going to give up. So you can make that proclamation all you want, but the enemy's going to keep bringing. So you got to, there's sometimes you got to keep giving it to God. Here, God. Hear God. Hear God. And then, this will solidify everything. If you can just get yourself to the point of getting past the situation. It happened to Bianca and I. We were praying. We were getting close. Fasting. Believe in God. He's done so many miracles. I've seen God here heal people of AIDS, just crazy stuff. I, I felt God was going to do it for my wife. I was believing. I'm really, I'm, I'm in Him. In the time of deep prayer, God, God spoke to me. He said, you're afraid. He said, you're still afraid. What do you mean, Lord? I'm with you. I'm trusting you. He said, you're afraid. And the reason you're believing for a miracle you don't believe I can control the doctor's hands. He you said, your fear is that you, you don't think that I'm big enough to control his hands. You, you, you're, you're afraid because you don't think that I can take her through that surgery and make her arm. Rick, you understand. I, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ain't no need to argue with God. He was right. So I came back. I testified. I said, if God don't do a miracle, I know we already got the doctors. Within that time, this is what God did. This is what God did. Once, once that rolled in me, came to that, I started embracing God. Not my will, but let your will be done. 
I'm about finished. I just got to tell you what, what, what happens when you turn fear into the Lord. All of a sudden, Bianca can tell you. It opened up. You were able to go to Duke University. God brought the best doctor in the world to talk to us. And he said, I'll do it for you. He said, I'm not going to have to put all the skull off to the side. He said, I'm just going to get a little part I'm going to put it inside. And he said, when I get finished, he said, I'm going to take that skull and put it right back on. He said, just, just so you'll know, he said, I'm the, I'm the best doctor in the world, but I'm going to bring in another doctor that's the best doctor in the world. And just in case I miss something, he said, I'm going to invite him just to sit in the room. Come on to your feet, I'm finished. First invitation. If you don't know Jesus, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you don't know him, ask him in your heart, right where you stand. And as you're standing there, ask him, Lord, I'm a sinner. I believe that the Father raised you from the dead. You are Lord. You're my Lord. He'll save you right there. Then we invite you to the altar. We invite you to the altar because we want to grab you. We want to hug on you. Pray with you. We want to get you connected to the covering. Because fear is going to come. But you're going to have to have the collective prayers of the saints to help you. And I know. I know what my wife and I, it was Ebenezer praying. They prayed. They prayed. And they prayed. And God delivered. And because we've seen so many miracles here at Ebenezer... Man, it was encouragement to help us to get through our time of fear and see God's salvation. Man, if you're here today, we invite you to the altar. Second and final invitation. This is one, maybe you're here today. We don't know your situation, but you're dealing with some fear. Maybe it's fear with your kids, a, a relationship, uh, on your job. Something is going on. We're not asking you to confess it all to us. You know. You know what you're struggling with. Some of you, you fear depression. You're going through just fear of life. You've got phobias or something. As I invite my deacons to stand with me and our intercessors, our ministers, we invite you to the altar. Maybe you need to grab somebody's hand. Come on to the altar today. If you have that need, and maybe you need to pray for somebody else, bring it to the altar right now. God is faithful. God is faithful. Come, if that, you feel God pull on your heart, come, come, come. God is faith. We're dealing with fear today. And we're going to deal with it in the name of Jesus. God is faithful. Salvation. Dealing with fear in various forms. Bring it to the altar. Bring it to the altar today. Maybe you're standing there. You're like, I'm fearful of getting up. Grab somebody's hand. Make that step today. Give it to God. Man, God is faithful. He is so faithful. Maybe you just need to stand at the altar. Say, the day is my day. My salvation is today. It is today. It is today. God has this. God has a way.
just to be with us, Lord. Be with each and every household that's represented on the altar right now, God. Bless, Lord, that we come together. You said we're two or three are gathered in your name. You are there in the midst, Lord. We have more than two or three, Lord God. We got more than enough to chase a thousand or ten thousand, Lord God. We set the devil to flight right now in the name of Jesus. We stand, Lord God, supporting each other in prayer, Lord God, that we might do your will, God. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over every family that's represented here today, God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that as our pastor poured out the word before us, Lord, that we would take hold of it, Lord God, and use it in our very lives. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We cast out fear. Father, we invite your perfect love into each and every heart right now because perfect love casts out all fear, Lord God. And you so love the world that you gave your only begotten son. We thank you for Jesus today, God. We thank you for victory today, Lord God. We ask you to touch every hand, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Some may feel like they're about to lose it, Lord God, but we know, Lord God, you are the great intercessor, Lord God. We receive everything that you have for us today, Lord God. Give out your perfect peace, which surpasses all understanding, God. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Some might feel they're running out of strength or running out of time, Lord God, but we know that you're in charge of strength. You're in charge of time, Lord God. The seasons are in your hand, Lord God. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus that we'll be able to line up with what you're doing, Lord God. We embrace the victory of the cross of Calvary right now, Lord God. Everything that you've already provided, we receive it, Lord. We thank you in advance for all blessings and the measure of your power. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We ask that you can to allow us to walk with you. We ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 choices in his life that he should have never made. Uh, but he's coming before the church. Uh, he wants to come back home. And, uh, we're going to embrace him with love and, and encourage him. Ebenezer, uh, what I want to do right now, uh, would you stand? I want us to just um, just focus on him. Just kind of point your hand over to him. And I want you to just pray your best prayer for him right now. Would you? For him and his wife or his maybe soon to be wife, and baby, and whole family. Just pray right now. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that Derek has come forth. God, I thank you. I've seen the tears. Let you squeeze his heart. 
God, you've given miracle after miracle, and he's trying to be the big brother that steps up. He realized that he's a sinner, but you've saved him by your grace. Lord, he wants to put on that full armor. Oh, God, we come and we rebuke the attacks of the enemy right now. Any addictions, God, we we pray right now that they be broken. We, we call out those demonic spirits and cast them out. In Jesus' name, we tell the demons that you cannot rest on anyone here in Ebenezer. We thank you, God, for a covering right now, and we welcome your spirit where it's been cleansed, Lord. Come on in in a powerful way, God. Father, thank you. Use them for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And count it done. Amen. Can you give God a hand clap? Amen. We've got another couple that's here today. Boys are so good. I'm going to give a mic to them. They can let us know who they are and why they stand before us. Give an honor to God. My name is Katrina Roberts, and I am originally from Trenton, New Jersey. I've been, I'm coming here for almost a year now. I don't know if any of you guys have seen me, but I've been almost coming here for almost a year, and I think I'm ready for, for this church to be my home. Good morning, God, Pastor. Um, same thing here. I've been coming here about a year. Um, I come. I work every other Sunday, so I'm here every other Sunday. Um, but I come as often as I can. I thank God that I finally think I found a good home to be to. And I want y'all to pray. And I, I know some of y'all guys have seen, showed me a lot of love and everything that y'all make me feel like home. That this is home. So this is what I'm doing. Brother Deacons, after hearing their uh, testimony, they're coming on their Christian experience. Uh, they want this place to be home. And we've seen them. On and on, and I just thank God that He's knitting hearts uh, together in heaven. So, how should they be received? Amen. We slow it down, we go old school. And the real reason we want everybody to see who you are. Yeah, they taking pictures, they doing all kinds. It's, it's on Facebook, and I told everybody. And that's the way so we can embrace you and we can love on you and encourage you. Ebenezer, if you're part of Ebenezer, you want to get to know them, love on them, can you come to your feet and just give God a hand clap? <laughs> you may be seated. What a great time to take communion. As we go into our uh, communion time, until 8 o'clock, uh, we had one that was Amy, Sister Amy was baptized. And wanted to have communion today to give our first communion. I told them that if there's any awe in your heart, that means any unforgiveness, any relationship issues, take it to the Lord right now. Ask God to forgive you. If you can't do that, if you feel like, you know what, I just can't let it go, don't take communion. Because the scriptures are very clear. If you take communion and you got something in your heart, you take it unworthily, and you can actually bring judgment in your life. So we want, to, we want to make sure we don't want that brought upon you. So uh, at this time, I just want to give you a time as we're uh, preparing to give that out. And just say, God, forgive me. Deliver me, set me free. If that person is here and you're not sure, they've let it go in. Take this time as we're giving it out to go over there and say, I'm sorry. I love you. Let's move on. Because we want God's presence to be with us. Uh, as our deacons, uh, they're going to pray over the bread and juice. I want to remind you with the cups, please fill off the clear part first. Uh, it'll be a lot easier to get the bread out, and then you'll be able to get the juice. Just kind of put your fingernail. We've got some senior citizens, maybe some arthritics that uh, may need some help. So look to your neighbor to assist with that. We're going to ask uh, Deacon Nevin if he pray over our bread and juice at this time. Most kind and gracious, Heavenly Father, this morning we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Now, Father, we ask that you would bless this bread. 
Bless the Jews, Father. As we partake of it, we assure that, yes, we do believe that Christ stood on the cross for our sake, and he died, and rose again on the third day. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Gets the bread. We have wafers that are unleavened. But he had a bigger piece of bread and broke it for the disciples. And this is it. This represents my body. That's going to be broken for you. As often as you eat it, let us do it in remembrance of him. Let us eat together. He gets that glass of wine. And that day and time, traditionally, they would share it amongst each other. But when he picks it up this time, so this represents my blood. It's really pretty gruesome when you think about it. It, it really shook the table. They just shut it down. I, I can see them now. What do you mean? Your blood. What can wash away my sin? As often as you drink, let us do it in remembrance of Him. Let us drink together. Hallelujah. Anybody love Jesus here today? 
Hallelujah. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Would you come to your feet at this time? I'm going to ask this to Amy if she come and stand. This name had a testimony just a few weeks ago of how God allowed her to be here at Heaven Eve. She had, she had given up on the church. Uh, didn't have transportation. Just began to pray. She did one of those prayers. You just throw up, God, if you're going, you're going to have to give me the church. And guess what God did? God the church. Hallelujah. God the church. All she could do was that Sunday just cry. But we're so glad that she's put on full arm today been baptized and we give you this certificate of baptism. I know the plans I have for you, a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. Yeah. Amy's going to be standing with me at the end of this service so you can come around and just uh, give her some hugs and uh, encourage her. I want you to be praying for my family on next Sunday. Uh, we're going to take the time to unplug. I've been traveling with my wife around the world in different places, but I'm going to take the remainder of my family. We're going to go up to the mountains. I'm going to spend some time uh, looking at God's creation. On uh, next Sunday, 8 o'clock, Minister Barry will be doing that service. And 11 o'clock, uh, Wade Irvin, Minister Wade Irvin, he's here. Uh, he'll be doing 11 o'clock service. So you're in capable hands. And we're going to continue on taking every round goes higher and higher. So pray for us that we be encouraged in the Lord, that we all grow. Don't forsake your family. I don't care your jobs, whatever. I don't care if you're the president of some CEO or something. Take time for your family because you need them and they need you. You choir, you give us a closing selection. teaching us how to deal with fear. Lord, we fail so many times, but thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you how you're adding to the body, how you're delivering and setting. For we thank you for those people that received their breakthrough today. Oh God, they saw your salvation today. So we thank you for your grace and mercy. As we leave this place, let us not leave your presence. Order our steps, God. We give all glory, honor, and praise to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you greet somebody for you?